Hey, this is Andrew from AJS Woodworks. In this video, I'm going to show how to replace the valve cover and intake manifold on the 2011 to 2016 Chevy Cruze. And this repair also applies to the 2012 to 2016 Chevy Sonic with the 1.4 liter turbo. Before I get started, I just want to let you know that I have all the parts and all the tools that you'll need linked in the description below. So just check that out and you can purchase everything you need if you don't have it already. And I'll also have all the torque specs listed as well. So a common issue with the Chevy Ecotec 1.4 liter engine is the PCV valve failing in the intake manifold or in the valve cover or sometimes they both fail. And so you may replace your intake manifold or you may re replace your valve cover and then only a few thousand miles later you have to replace it again. And so this is going to be a repair that prevents you from having to do that. There's also another option through cruise kits which allows you to bypass the typical way that the PCV valve works. That involves fabrication. They do provide you with all the parts, but this is a way to fix that issue without having to use additional parts or fabricate anything. So some of the symptoms you may notice uh, when you have a bad PCV valve is a rough idle, you may be burning oil, or you may have some of your gaskets giving out like your valve cover gasket or your oil pan gasket. And that's all because the PCV valve controls the pressure that's inside of your engine. If the PCV valve fails, then you have an increased pressure inside of your engine of uh, blow off gases that aren't able to be released. And that has to escape somehow. And so it usually escapes through a gasket or some other way that it's not really supposed to. And so if you don't replace that valve, it can really do some damage to your engine. How do you determine if you have a bad PCV valve? First, you'll need to remove this cover here. And this just pops off. What you're looking for is this here. And this will show you if you have a bad uh, PCV valve in your valve cover. So what you do is you turn on your engine and you'll feel right here in front of the little opening there. And if there's air rushing through there, then you have a bad PCV valve. So let's check mine and see if we have air rushing. So now we're gonna test to see if our PCV valve is leaking. And you can hear that air rushing through the hole there and that's not supposed to be happening. So we know that my PCV valve in my valve cover is bad, but what we don't know is whether the valve and my intake manifold is bad or not. And the issue there is if you don't replace the intake manifold valve, then you'll keep replacing your valve cover because it will continue to go bad if the intake manifold valve is bad. So what we need to do is check both. One way that you can check your intake manifold is to check visually from the outside. In order to do that, you'll need to remove this here and you'll look down in the hole and you'll see if there is a little orange tab visible. And if that tab is visible, then you don't need to replace your intake manifold. But if the tab is not visible, then that means your valve is bad and you need to replace the whole intake manifold. There's no way around it. You have to replace the whole thing. Fortunately, Dorman, who makes these intake manifolds and valve covers, redesigned the intake manifold so that there's a retainer that holds the valve in place so that it does not go bad again or is much less likely to go to bad again. What I'm gonna do is take off the old intake manifold, see if my valve is still in place, and then replace it with the new intake manifold if it is not in place. Start by disconnecting your negative battery cable. We'll start by replacing the intake manifold. So first we'll remove this connection here and it just has a retaining clip that you can pry out with a screwdriver. Remove that, that's what it looks like. And then you can just pull up on it and that pops off and 
hopefully you don't lose the o-ring like i just did so in order to check and see if your intake manifold needs to be replaced i suggest you take a long cotton swab look down into the port here on your intake manifold and clean it off with a with the cotton swab to see if you can identify the little orange tip of the PCV valve indicator. If you can't identify that, then you need to replace your intake manifold. I'll show a picture of what that should look like. Mine is all covered in oil, which yours may be as well. So that's why it's necessary to use a little cotton swab to clean it off. So next I'm gonna remove the wire harness just to get that out of the way. My clip is broken here. And then we can pop it off of the back here. Now we can pop these connections off on the back here. You just press in this tab there to release it. Press in this tab to release this one. Disconnect this electrical connection here, which I believe is the mass airflow sensor. Next, we'll unplug the fuel injectors. Each one has a metal clip. I've partially popped off that clip there. I'll show it to you on a different one. You can see it there at the bottom right there. You just need to pop that out and then this wiring connection will come off. And there are of course four of these that you'll need to pop off. So I just wanted to show you in a little bit more detail. This is the fuel injector connection and this is what you're popping out. So I just used a small file and a screwdriver uh, just to wedge in there, pop it out. You have to get both sides out in order for it to come out, as you can see. Next, we need to remove the intake tube from the throttle body. So here's the intake manifold. There's the throttle body, and we just need to remove that tube from it. You also want to remove this connection as well. Now that we have all those connections off, we can now start on disconnecting the intake manifold itself using those bolts down there. So we'll start with these two and I'll be using an eight millimeter socket to remove these bolts. I'll just continue to re remove the rest of the bolts until the intake manifold can be removed. So it took a little while, but I'll show you the things that a lot of videos don't show you. 
of what you actually have to remove in order to fully remove the intake manifold. So starting with some of your wiring harness connections, you have an oval hole here that connects to this. You have a hole here that connects to this and a hole here and that connects to this. You then have a very difficult connection here that basically slides on. It has three tabs. So here you see the three tabs there and basically this one has to be pulled back at the same time as these are pinched in. It typically kind of takes two hands to do that, um, but then this will slide off. You also have these two tube connections. This one was kind of dry rotted and broke on me and that one connects here. You can see the rest of the tube is. And the other one connects here, right next to this connection there. And so that short one goes there. This longer tube here goes there. So in order to remove the fuel rail, you'll need this star bit here. Now you can remove the fuel rail. And now you can completely remove your intake manifold. And then you'll just need to remove your mass airflow sensor and your throttle body to put them on the new intake manifold. So you'll just need a smaller star bit than the one that you used for your fuel line. And that can be coaxed out. Takes a little bit of pulling because of the O-ring. Now that we have the mass airflow sensor off, we can then remove the throttle body. And you're going to need this special bit here. So if you only needed to replace the intake manifold, then you're finished and you just put on the new intake manifold, reversing all the steps that I just showed. But if you also need to replace the valve cover, then this is the point where you would start to remove all the things necessary to replace that. So let's get started doing that. I've already removed this connection here because I needed to move the cable out of the way to take off the intake manifold need to remove that to replace your valve cover. To remove your coil pack you'll need this special star bit again. You'll need your 8 millimeter socket to remove all of the bolts surrounding the valve cover. Now that all the bolts are loosened, you can begin to remove the valve cover. To remove this piece off of the side of the valve cover, you simply press your screwdriver in like this on the tabs and then it will slide up. Now you can fully remove your valve cover. And set it to the side. Now once you've done that you'll see that my gasket is still in place. Your gasket may come off with your valve cover. I previously replaced my valve cover 
gasket because it was leaking. However, I used a lot of silicone RTV sealant and so I'm going to have to do a lot of scraping and removal in order for the new gasket to sit correctly. Just be mindful of that. If you've had to replace it in the past and you used a lot of RTV, you're going to have to clean all that up. Now that the surface is fully cleaned of all sealant and any residue, you can go ahead and put the new valve cover on. Before you put the new valve cover on, I recommend using a little bit of RTV sealant just in these two corners here, along here and along here. Those are a couple areas where the block is kind of separated, so you just need to apply a little bit there. And I just went ahead and applied some sealant as well to some specific areas on the head of my engine that were gouged out. I just wanted to make sure that those areas sealed well as well. Then you can just drop in your new valve cover. And I made sure that my valve cover gasket was seated well in the valve cover before dropping it on. Now you can go ahead and tighten down all of the bolts on the valve cover in a crisscross pattern. I'm just loosely tightening them at first and then we'll tighten them down a second time again in a crisscross pattern. Before putting in the coil pack, remember to check your spark plugs to make sure that they're nice and tight. Don't want one of those shooting out on you. The Dorman valve cover comes with a new o-ring for your oil cap, so that's what I'm going to do now is replace the o-ring on the oil filler cap to ensure a good connection. You can then replace your oil dipstick. Now you can put your throttle body back on your new intake manifold. Now that your throttle body is installed, you can now reinstall your map sensor and it actually comes with a new o-ring here in the package for the intake manifold. So you can take off that old one. It takes a little coaxing to get off. You can put on your new o-ring. And then you'll just press that into your new intake manifold and then reuse that screw for your map sensor. You can then reattach the vacuum lines here. The shorter one I accidentally ripped, but it's okay. It'll still reach, I think. And that will go here. And then the longer one will go here. And then you'll just slide this piece onto this retainer there. This Dorman intake manifold doesn't have the same clips that the OEM manifold has. So it just slides on. It doesn't have any retaining clips. It's just on there with friction. So here you see the vacuum apparatus plugged in here, the long tube. 
and the short tube here. And then I actually unplugged part of the PCV tubing that was connected because I actually accidentally cracked my PCV hose while I was working on it. So I have to get a new one. Unfortunately, those run around 80 bucks if you need one in a pinch. So uh, try not to crack this cheap plastic corrugated tubing otherwise so that's why you can see this little nozzle here i took that piece here off of that now we can connect the rest of our wiring harness and get our intake manifold installed And then of course remember to plug in your coil pack. And reminder, mine is broken, my connector. So you'll just have a piece here that slides in and connects. You won't have this separate piece. Now we can work on replacing the O-rings on all the fuel injectors. The kit actually comes with new O-rings for these as well. So we'll go ahead and take those off. Now you can install the new fuel injector O-rings. We can now install the bolts on the intake manifold. Now it's important to remember to install your ground wire on the top bolt here of the intake manifold. You can also press your fuel rail with the fuel injectors into your intake manifold. It takes a little bit of force, but you can feel it push into the intake manifold whenever it clears the O-ring. Now go ahead and tighten the bolt that will hold on your ground wire now that the fuel injectors are pressed in. All right, now you can make all the connections again with the fuel injectors so these are the fuel injector plugs they all connect in right here and now you can install the self-tapping screws to hold the fuel rail onto the intake manifold those take a 10 millimeter socket You can then put on the fuel rail retainer clip. These hooks go up under the section here. And then just snaps onto there. This wiring harness will slide in to the fuel rail. This will slide onto here. This will snap on there. And this will press it here. And then take this side piece here on the side of the valve cover, line that up and press that in until it clicks. Now one piece that you do have to take off of the old intake manifold as well is this plastic piece. You can just press these clips in and hope they don't break and then pop that off there. And then that piece here is just going to click into the portion there on the new intake manifold. And that's going to hold your fuel line in place. So this little piece here takes some prying 
you have to press in that side before it'll pull out but then you can put your fuel line in there and it'll clamp over it and keep it in place all right so in the process of replacing my valve cover and my intake manifold i cracked this tube here that runs along and connects to the intake manifold right here it also connects to the air intake down here that connection and unfortunately this is a pretty expensive hose it's the pcv hose and it's a cheap hose cheaply made but it's very expensive to purchase so if you buy it from the gm dealer it's going to be about 90 almost 100 dollars if you can stand to wait two or two to four weeks you can get it on amazon for about half that price uh, in order to replace this hose you're just going to need to pop it off at this end here and then pop it off at this connection here so as you can see on the new hose this connection here is connected to this side of the hose all you have to do is pull this wire clip out and then you can pull this end off and then this one you just squeeze both sides here and you can pull it off of this end so i'll go ahead and do that for the old one and then we can put on the new one all right so i have it running you can check your valve here it's not making any noises no vacuum noises when you put your finger over it so you know that's good uh, and hopefully it would be since it is a brand new valve i just want to check around the valve cover and make sure you don't have any oil leaking out there double check all your connections you don't want to have a vacuum leak just because you didn't plug something in I hope you found this video helpful on how to replace the valve cover, the intake manifold, and the PCV hose on the 2011 to 2016 Chevy Cruze, Buick Encore, and Chevy Sonic. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.